Good evening. So, we'd like to get started. What better way to get started than to get all of you singing? Here's a little song by Jane Sapp. I'm an E flat, please. Repeat after me. We have come too far. We have come too far. We can't turn around. We can't turn around. We'll flood the streets with justice. We'll flood the streets with justice. We are freedom bound. We are freedom bound. So we are the PMN Chorus. Thanks to Sandy Sachs for organizing and suggesting this. And my name is Nick Page. I direct the Mystic Chorale here in Boston. If you're interested in learning more about us in intermission, I'll be at one of the tables in the back with information. We will sing first, and then we will invite you to sing with us. And when I break it into a round, It'll be like group one, group two, group three, group four. Okay? of bright morning stars are here. We have Charlie King. Is he here right now? Oh, and Marsha. Anyway, this is to, uh, to honor Marsha and Charlie. Uh, and um, Charlie is one of the featured artists this weekend. Uh, their version of Angels We Have Heard on High, which is in Rise Up Singing. And your words are solar power, inexpensive energy. Okay, here we go. This features Mabel on piano.
please also thank Jackie Nam Damsky on violin. <laughs> Your next artist today is Reggie Gibson, who will do a set. So the next song featuring Reggie doesn't count as part of his set. This is still the chorus set. So I'd like to bring up Reggie. I've had a pleasure of working with Reggie on several occasions, including with my mystic chorale. He has worked with Mose Def. He has been a national slam poet. He has worked with the Handel and Haydn Society. He has worked with Kurt Vonnegut. He actually memorized Kurt Vonnegut's mass and did it with Kurt Vonnegut. And uh, he is, uh, I saw his workshop at the Harvard Divinity School. His master's thesis was a comparative literature thesis where he compared the Iliad with gangster rap. <laughs> so we're doing Reggie's piece, um, Here We Are in a Sea of Stars. Oh, and by the way, this features a sequencer, which you will hear. Hello to all. This is a piece that was written because sometimes we need to slow down and ask the right questions. Because when we don't ask the right questions, we get into the same kind of trouble that we found ourselves two Novembers ago. And, uh, yeah. But this is for those of us who refuse to shut up. And the reason why I think we hate poetry and hate poets is because we keep doing the philosophical thing of asking question upon question upon question, and we haven't found the answers to anything yet. But we're somehow bettered by the asking. And so this is for us and what it is that we really know about what it means to be part of this seven billion member club. Here we are in a sea of stars, somewhere between Venus and Mars. Short-lived hominids hanging about, doing our best just to figure it out. come from? Where do we go? What does it mean to question? What does it mean to know? What is this thing we have deemed as reality? Is it real or just an imagined fallacy we've all invented from our collective senses? Is this world merely a screen upon which shadows are beamed as they radiate emanating from a light screen from behind us? Why does space and time seem to confine us? Is there more to us or are we all just dust floating in a back of galactic blackness? Does anybody, 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 does anybody really know what the fact is? I mean, is there a being listening to prayer? Or are we all alone and there's nothing there? Well, I don't know the math, but I know somehow one life plus two short equals live your life now, cause we are in a sea of stars. Between Venus and Mars, just hanging about. Zeno and Parmenides, Epicurus, Augustine, Sartre, and Socrates, Bodhidharma, Gaut, Tamakon, and Protagoras, Kierkegaard, Hegel, Emerson, and Pythagoras, all of them relentlessly question dimensions that make up the makeup of human existence, the manic and the madness, the panic and the sadness, the inner and the outness, the how to be without this degrees. 
call us planetoids, y'all. Meaning our lives are so brief, we might as well not live at all. But isn't that part of what beauty we possess? The fact that we're born in this flesh means we're all destined for death. And that we're all just borrowing breath that'll pass to another as soon as we've left. The only moments that we have are what the saints allow. Life is lived quick, so you better live right now, cuz in a season between Venus and Mars, hanging about, just trying to figure it out, in a season between Venus and Mars, short-lived confidence, just trying to figure it out. We got this fight. We gotta live it right. Don't let them take it from us, y'all. We gotta fight. Please welcome back, Richard Gibson. Another round for, the, for Nick and the Mystics. I am, um, I have reached the realm of being a gentleman of a certain age. And um, I'm not sure about the gentleman part, but I am somewhere between um, Hell yeah, and do you dig? <laughs> so I just mentioned a whole bunch of philosophers and philosophy. So I would like to continue along that vein a bit because we are in uh, a church here that was frequented by Unitarian ministers. And uh, as I attend a church that's frequented by Unitarian ministers, ministers who adopted, uh, bless you, whoever that was, adopted uh, the politic and the spiritual. And two of my favorites, uh, not ministers, one was a minister, one was not, were uh, two transcendentalists who found me in Chicago uh, years ago through a book. And I, uh, as I like to tell people, my mother and my father, my father was a, a Chicago police officer and my mother was a Jehovah's Witness. So you imagine those two, right? A fear of God and a fear of man. Um, and so the, 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 the guys whose work I, I found, they spoke about freedom and freedom of soul, freedom of, of intellect and, and all of that. And that was... Um, Henry David Thoreau and, and Ralph Waldo Emerson. So what I need you guys to do is I want you to listen to what I say and if you dig, 
for those of you who are a little bit, well, I think everybody here should probably understand what do you dig means, right? <laughs> but for those of us who might have been born, you know, not too long ago, do you dig means do you really understand, do you get under, do you feel me? That's what you would say right now. So if you feel feeling this, I just want you guys to say, yes, we dig. So let's try this. Do you dig? Yes, we dig. Okay, now only say that if you mean it, <laughs> right? And if you've listened to it, because if you Say you dig something and then you find out you don't dig it. This is how we get who we got in the White House. <laughs> Henry Thoreau told civilization, yo, I got to go, baby. I need a vacation. So he went out to Walden where upon he copped this revelation. Whoa. So many of us live our lives out in quiet desperation. Lo and behold, another old quotation seems to capture the essence of a modern vexation. It's as if Thoreau knew that in the future you and I would have to act in radical ways to mitigate the sad fact that because we've got to slave to keep our bills paid. Sometimes it seems our minds are kind of ripe to get played by the vultures in our culture only hoping to withhold us from anything any deeper than work while we scold you, buy what we told you, pay what you owe, uh, and we'll ensure you've got a debt you will never get over. Treating human beings as if we're only skin machines where the cash is. Some sick profiteers, demographics, puppets made of plastic, molded and then mastered, stretched thin and spread to what bled dead into our caskets. Oh yes, we try to contrast it by coming off sarcastic, hating the situation we find is so drastic. Many of us huff and puff and snort and drink all kinds of stuff to get blasted, hoping to deaden the pain of our constantly kicked asses. But many of us will find that that action only makes the masses act more passive, which keeps their minds inactive to the plans of all the fascists who hope to keep us separated into races and genders and classes, because that's the way you maintain the status quo status as is. But don't let them head fake you, shake it, bake it, back, break you down to the ground, come around, clown and undertake you. You gotta fight back. And my advice is use the poetry and music trapped inside of you as your weapon. Do you dig? Do you dig? Do you dig? Now, Ralph Waldo Emerson was that brilliant thinker and decidedly was the dumb amongst New England transcendentalists. He said we all should become self-reliant existentialists, which means we should learn to live out of our very own experience and not accept all the preconceptions we've inherited like social, cultural, political, and all kinds of religious prejudice. He says we should beware of demagogic fundamentalists. He said we should beware of demagogic fundamentalists. He said we should beware of demagogic fundamentalists. Dig the way Ralph Waldo kicks that 19th century rhetoric. To be yourself in a world that demands you become other is the greatest accomplishment. Be patient. Every artist was once an amateur, and your character is more important than your intellect. For every minute you spend being angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. But the goal of life is not necessarily to be happy, but to be useful and make your life make some kind of difference. Now, it won't be easy for any of us to do any of this. We'll find that sometime we all have to make a mental shift into a higher way of thinking and a broader consciousness and listen to the voice within, the one that insists that we learn to love, play, chant, meditate, and then dance, yo. Sometimes we got to learn to sit back and take a chance on becoming something more than we've been convinced we can be. I'm talking real human beings and not these human bling things. I know the world can be an enemy whose mission be to empty you of empathy, intelligence, and energy. Come around and destroy whatever joy you got left. Beat you down, make you want to give up your last breath. But don't let them head fake you, shaking, baking, back, break you down to the ground. Come around, clown, and undertake you. You got to fight back. And my advice is, use whatever music and poetry is trapped inside of you as your weapon. Do you dig? Yes. Do you dig? Yes. Do you dig? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when I was a younger man, it was almost, it was not certain that I would ever become an older man. 
As I like to tell audiences who are in my age group and above, I was suffering from a disease that most of us here have already gotten over, which is our 20s. <laughs> and a guy named Kent Foreman uh, came to me when I was in my 20s and said, you know, kid, if you don't drink yourself to death, you might be a halfway decent boy. And of course, I'm like, well, get the hell out of my face. You know, who's talking? I'm 20, man, don't talk to me, you know. And, um, but he was patient with me. And I think that's what it's gonna take sometimes. Some of, our, some of us will have relatives and folks a little bit hard-headed and we have to keep coming back to them and keep coming back to them and keep coming back to them and revealing something to them. And sometimes you know, we have to be patient with them because there might be something trapped inside of them that needs to be liberated. Um, he would never write his work down, Kent. And so I had to listen to him and listen to him say it. And um, this was one of his pieces um, called Testimony. If he were here, what he would say is, I was sorely tempted to name this poem The Ways of White Folks. But since everybody does this, it's way too racist. A feminist friend of mine suggested I call this poem an ode to testosterone. But since women do this too, it's way too sexist. The philosophical agnostic in me was tempted to call this poem a meditation upon the sanctimony of the Judeo-Christian ethos. But that is too ponderous. So I will call it what it is. A testimony in defense of the first cat to ever blow his cool. The first murderer, according to Judeo-Christian culture, Cain. And I quote, Yeah, Abel was my brother. Hell yeah, I killed him. Hell no, I am not sad. Now that book of yours claims I was jealous. I was mad. Now, remorse is in order, of course, and naturally, Granddad, in his divine wrath, sees fit, justifiably, I can admit, in barring me from the primordial department store. But I didn't mind all that much because, truthfully, y'all, Eden was a whore. So I hit the path, man, east to the land of Nod where I immediately got down to the business of tilling the ground in order to cultivate a finer crop of pod. Man, I mean, I am a farmer. You understand. Well, from there, I watched this spectacle of y'all, the human, growing. You people puzzle me. I mean, you outlaw my name, you make it synonymous with shame, yet when I look at history, all I see is murder. Look to your heroes and your thrillers, from Beowulf to St. James Bond. <laughs> They're all killers now. You tell me, when will the slaughter cease? Since any number of your saviors were born, there hasn't been 100 years of peace. And that J.C. cat was killed, uh, murdered, uh, excuse me, we are in a church, so let's tell the truth. He was, he was executed by the state at the request of the multitudes because the dude was so rude as to kick it to you in platitudes. Platitudes. Such a noble portrait of humanity your catechism paints, yet still there have been far more murderers than saints. Amen. Now, I'm not to blame. It's just an elementary truth y'all gonna have to face, an intrinsic characteristic of the human race, that human beings must eat and sleep most times with one another, and then find new and improved ways of annihilating each other. So yeah, Abel was my brother. And well, hell, I guess you can say I am kind of proud to be the first of such a goodly, noble, righteous crowd. Ken Foreman. And I'll leave you guys with a piece that 
I was hoping I'd be able to retire this piece, uh, but I can't because, you know, with, with seeing what's going on with, with what's happening with immigrants and refugees in this country and, and all of this, um, it's disturbing and it's painful. And um, the history of this is, is it was written some time ago when I was um, listening to members um, of the right wing basically talk about who has the right to be an American, who has the right to to the promises of, of democracy and the Constitution. And, and it was just ugly the way they were talking about it. They were splitting everyone up into them and us, and they're not us, so they're them. And it was crazy. At the time, I was teaching my son about American music, my oldest boy, Jordan, and I took him to, to, to listen to Johnny Cash's work. And Johnny Cash has a song called One Piece at a Time. And it features the protagonist of the song as an individual who works in a Cadillac factory, but he cannot afford to buy the car. So he decides what he's going to do is he's going to steal him the car, liberate it one piece at a time. Yeah. It takes him some time to put this together. And as it, as it goes with poetry, right, you, you, you find one, one set of information that matches with another set of information. And so I started thinking about what he was saying about that car. He put this car together and he starts it up. It starts up rough. He rolls it down the street and he goes, and somebody asks him, what year is that car? And he says, well, it's a 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. And it keeps going, going, going. And I'm like, yes. You know, then the metaphor. It's like, that is this country. It is made up of all of these different races, these different ethnicities and whatnot. And you can't just say it's just one thing. This is lava that has yet to cool. And what is, how it's going to be shaped depends upon the hand that shapes it. Right? Yeah. And so we need to be able to shape that, but understand that we are going to get burned at some time and be okay with that. Um, so I guess this is for us, 300 and some odd million Americans trying to figure out what the hell this thing is. I was at this one fancy coffee store next to a woman with looks I'd never seen before, but she seemed to have much charm and style and grace. Well, she stepped to the counter and she ordered a drink. It was an iced cappuccino with soy, I think, but I was preoccupied in trying to surmise her race. Seems she wasn't quite white, she wasn't quite black, she wasn't quite this, she wasn't quite that. In fact, I guess she wasn't quite anything, I suppose. Now, I didn't want to harass her or come off crass, but the question was burning and I had to ask, and she said, save your breath, I can guess what you want to know. <laughs> See, everywhere I go, folks stare at me, trying to decode what I'm supposed to be. But truth is, mister, calculate me ain't so easy as you can see. So, since you got the interest, I'll take the time and keep that question from smoking your mind. Just buy my coffee, and I'll tell you just what I be. So I said, no sweat. That's a bet. I'm always curious to know what I don't know yet. And for me, that's worth a cup of joe or maybe even two. So I reached in my pocket, paid for, put out the money, said, there you go, honey. Now tell me, girl. What in the world is you? Well, that's when she took a deep breath. And she went, well, a Jew, I, Talarin, Haitian, Dominican, Africa, Asian, Mexico, P, and Puerto, Nigeria, Brazilians, what I am. <laughs> and I'm knit to fit like a patchwork quilt in front of my sweat. They say country's built, but keep it simple, stupid. Call me American. Hands, please. Now, you can just call me American. You can just call me American. Though sometimes I ain't quite sure just what that means. But from sea to shining sea, there are 300 million me's. Red, white, and blue, and every in between. So we rap the we about democracy, about what makes ours different than them ancient Greeks. We broke subjects most folks would tell you is taboo. We talked about love and religion and politics, the Taliban and the Dixie Chicks, Democrats, Republicans, and them green rainbows, too. We miss old President Barack Obama and talked about Trump and Congress and all that drama and wondered, is our economy really going to keep on bouncing back? About whose fault it's going to be when our climate changes of trucks and such and good shooting ranges and why I prefer a PC, but she likes a Mac. Yet we act so much we lost track of time, and though we're different, we began to find that she and I was quick laugh becoming friends. Then she looked at her watch and said, oh, got to run. Thanks for the talk. I've enjoyed it, hon. Who can say? Maybe one day we'll see each other again. And as she grabbed her purse and headed toward the door, we looked around and said goodbye once more. This was some dude looking real confused, comes over real slow. He goes, uh, say, buddy, seem like you know that woman. You mind very much if I ask you something? I said, save your breath. I can guess what you want to know. Well, that's when I took a deep breath. And I said, well, a Jew, I, Talarin, Haitian, Dominican, Africa, Asian, Mexico, Pian, Puerto, Nigeria, Brazilians, what she am. 
and she's knit to fit like a patchwork quilt from her sweat. This country country's built to keep it simple. Stupid. Call her American. And you can just call her American. You can just call her American. And though sometimes she ain't quite sure just what that means. But from sea to shining sea, there are 300 million she's. A red, white, and blue, and every in between. Now, 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 you can just call us Americans. You can just call us Americans. Though sometimes we ain't quite sure just what that means. But from sea to shining sea, there are 300 million weeds. Red, white, and blue. And every in between. Insert funky breakdown here. Thank you. Thank you. The incredible Reggie Gibson. Thank you so much. Back in the 2014, uh, after Pete Seeger passed away, we had a tribute concert right in this very church, and uh, it was a great evening. And the first people that I called to be a part of that tribute were uh, my friends Brian and Rosie Amador, who you may know as Sol y Canto. They had had the chance to work with Pete, and they're such uh, so knowledgeable about Latin American music that they, they got to teach Pete Seeger a few things about Latin American music. <laughs> and if you've ever got to spend time with Pete, you know it was usually the other way. Um, so they have been making Latin roots music to change the world. Passionate, poetic, playful, and honest. Their latest project, Sabor y Memoria, a musical feast in seven courses, features the rhythms and the recipes of Cuba, Venezuela, Mexico, Argentina, Peru, Panama, Puerto Rico, and East Cambridge. <laughs> Please welcome Solicanto. Thank you so much, Dave. I love that introduction. <laughs> oh, this one? Okay. Pretty good, but that's North Cambridge. Un poquito, un poquito hacia el ladito. It's wonderful to be here. Bienvenidos. It's so fantastic to be back with uh, everyone from uh, People's Music Network. I have to tell you that back in 1984, when Brian and I were co-founders, amongst others, of Flor de Caña, yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of how we, how I felt like the round robins. That's how I felt welcomed into this community. So. I hold People's Music Network very close to my heart. Muchas gracias. Thank you. We're honored to be here. We're going to start off with a song from Cuba that we fell in love with and Brian rearranged for us. It's called Ayúdame Mirar, Help Me to See by Sotil Galan Molinet. Tells of a person seeing the ocean for the first time. Little piece of sea that kisses the sand. Little piece of sea that consoles me. I never imagined this intensity of blues that blinds me. Help me to see. Pedacito de mar que me consuela, pedacito de mar besando arena, toda tu inmensidad dejando huella, ayúdame a mirar, ayúdame a mirar. De tierra del trozo de las maderas, no pude imaginarme que existiera. Intensidad de azules que me ciega, ayúdame a mirar, ayúdame a mirar. Pedacito de mar, pedacito de mar, besando 
cadena toda tu inmensidad dejando huella ayúdame a mirar ayúdame a mirar de tierra adentro soy de las maderas no pude imaginarme que existiera intensidad de azul es que me ciega ayúdame a mirar ayúdame a mirar Ayúdame a mirar, ayúdame a mirar, ayúdame a song is by, by Brian, actually. It's called Buen Camino, which means good path. Let's say this. Good path, good detour, good stumble, and good recover. Good wound, good remedy, good failure, and good redemption. The road is your destiny. The road is yours, nothing more nor less. If you see me, greet me in passing, and good redemption. Buen camino, buen desvío, buen tropiezo, buena recuperación. Buena herida, buen remedio, buen fracaso y buena redención. Well, a couple of years ago, I had a really uh, radical idea. I thought, I could write songs in English. <clears throat> this is one 
It's called Love Wins. You can love who you love with all your heart. You can be who you are, no hiding. You can say what you will, but I fail to see what's wrong with that. You can hate who you hate, but what's the point? You can choke on your righteous anger. You can say what you will. But I can't see what's the gain from that. The arc of history is long, but it bends toward justice. May take a while, may take a lifetime more. But if you keep on loving in the face of hate, if you keep on loving. Keep on loving sooner or later in the course of time. Sooner or later, sooner or later, love wins. Join us. Love wins. Love wins. You can love who you love, love. You can be who you are with the ones that love you. You can speak from the heart, you can speak, you can know that there's always someone listening. Even when you begin to feel like a voice crying in the wilderness. It can be hard to believe, but I try to believe sooner or later. Love wins. country. He taught everybody in this country how to sing this song. You know which one it is, right? So please sing along with us, Guantanamera, por favor. I just wanted to add one more time. Gracias a todo corazón. Thank you, People's Music Network, for inviting us to sing. Carrie Kitchen, thank you for thinking of this. All the other wonderful performers who are part of this event. Muchas gracias. Guantanamera with all of you. Guantanamera. Arriba Guantanamera. Guantanamera. Arriba Guantanamera. Yo soy un hombre sincero. De donde crece la palma. Yo soy un hombre sincero, de donde crece la palma, y antes de morir me quiero echar mis versos de la alma. Sostiene 
Thank you. 